Dear Cover 3 Pod, Tom Fernelli called me a, quote, poor deluded bastard to start the season, and look where we are now. Tennessee is an undefeated top three team, and Tottenham is currently third in the English Premier League. My question is, why has Heupel been successful at UT? Remember, Heupel had three seasons at UCF, each one worse than the previous one. Nobody was clamoring for him to be a Power 5 head coach. So that's one part of this. And then he follows it up. Is there currently an underrated group of five coach that could succeed at a Power 5 school? Are we going to see less splashy hires and more, quote, program fits? Love the pod. Go Vols, Jake. Well, Jake, you're right. You were a deluded bastard, and I'm sorry for calling you that. But I will also point out that while Tennessee's undefeated, Tottenham has lost two straight, and your manager is not committing past January right now. So things aren't looking great there. But for Tennessee, solid. Why has he been successful? It's it can't just be like his offense is a trick bag. I, I think that's a large part of it, and, and I, I don't want to say that as like a way that discounts it because he it's runs it extremely ball. well. Yeah, like yeah. It, it those points count, right? If we're going to talk crap about Jimbo Fisher's offense, and we do because it doesn't create those easy wide open downfield shots and take advantage of the freebies and the rules of college football then we need to credit Josh Heupel's offense, which is really Art Browse's offense, for doing so. Like, they're running just straight Browse baylor stuff. It, it, it's not a whole lot different from what, at least from what my eyes tell me, from what Baylor used to run. Um, I think a couple things here. Number one, when that hire was made, I thought that he would not last there all that long, but it was a really smart hire because they had the potential for major sanctions to come, and they would score enough points to keep people in the stands because fans like offense. I think I underestimated a couple of things. And obviously they did too on the one of these things because they didn't start Hen and Hooker. They started Joe Milton, who really can't play, in my opinion. Right. But eventually Milton gets dinged and they have to put in Hooker. Maybe Hooker would have taken the job anyway because Milton's just not an accurate player. And Hooker turns out to be really, really good. Something that Justin Fuente and Virginia Tech also missed out on him. So maybe there's a chance that guy is a really, really bad practice player relative to his in game performance. I also thought he was not a very good recruiter at UCF, and I would stand by that. However, with Spire and the NIL stuff, Tennessee's recruiting has gotten much better. And I think that is a mostly a credit to their NIL. I know the staff works hard and whatnot, but if you just said, hey, independent of NIL, is Heupel a great recruiter? I would say no. I also think he's a pretty genuine guy. People in the building seem to believe in him, and there is something to that. But hitting on quarterback, who you didn't even realize was the guy until your starter got hurt, the, a really fun, innovative offense, massive turnover within your division, and you had a really, really awesome NIL program kick in at the right time would be kind of the four keys there. I think he has a chance to last longer than I initially thought uh, because of that. Yeah, that and was wrong. I think Hendon Hooker is a huge part of it because, like you said, he, they didn't name him the starter originally, but I think Hendon Hooker was a quarterback with a lot of talent who was at Virginia Tech, was in the wrong fit, comes in here. Is in a is in a good offense for him is just actually kind of blossomed into a better quarterback. Like the talent that he had, he's taking advantage of, and just it's again, like I've said, I've watched him play the accuracy, the decision making, all that stuff. He's he's mastered the offense, and he's doing a terrific job, and you're seeing that result. But then I also think on the other side of the ball, the defense has taken a step forward. The defense was not great last year. Tim Banks, his defense this year is doing an excellent job. They can, you know they can stop the run, and you know and you're looking around the SEC right now, stopping the run is pretty effective, especially mm -hmm. in the East, because there's not a lot of other Tennessees out there right now that you have to worry about being able to tear you apart through the passing game outside of Alabama, and we saw what happened there. It was 52-49 back and forth shootout. So I think Tim Banks deserves a lot of credit for what's happening there, and I think also Josh Heupel just being smart enough to hire former Illinois coaches and get that kind of pedigree into your staff, because Tim Banks was the defensive coordinator at Illinois for a while during the Tim Beckman era, and the recruiting coordinator at Illinois during that era, Alex Galesh, is now the offensive coordinator. So a good quarterback, a good defense, and Illinois pedigree. That's why Josh Heupel's having success in Knoxville. The other thing I think that that I did not properly count for was just how bad the offense was under Jeremy Pruitt relative to its talent level. Like I knew Jeremy Pruitt was kind of like Cro-Magnon defensive coordinator mm -hmm. and a really bad people manager overall, it's just during his stint as head coach. I'm not saying he has to be forever. But I don't think I accurately figured out how much talent Tennessee had on the offensive side of the ball and how much that talent was being suppressed by the archaic approach that Pruitt was trying to run with his guys offensively. 
And so if you don't correctly gauge the baseline of talent there, your assessment's going to be wrong. So I, I think that's another reason I was wrong about that. Sustainable over time? <sighs> is, is there a is there a to BS what level? Is, well, like can they play as a top five team consistently? Yeah, or? like does, does the the SEC if they are dominant, if they win the SEC, the SEC will react. Like there will be a response that goes across the SEC East, that goes across the entire SEC. I mean, there there will be a, a, de a defensive response in the way that they are played. There'll be a defensive response in the way that teams are constructed. Like you, there's no way that you can run the same plays forever at the very top of college football. As long as the hash marks don't change, yeah. uh, like they, they take advantage of the geometry pretty well. But let's also realize that Kendall Bryles, literally Art's son, runs a very similar thing in Arkansas. And their offense does not look as good as Tennessee's because Jefferson is not a good thrower. I mean, by like elite quarterback standards, he does a lot of things well. He just, he's not super accurate as far as throwing the football. So you do need quarterback to get this right. Now, if Nico is that dude, then yes, it's very sustainable. I mean, you put like a legitimate five-star type talent at quarterback and he hits and plays like a five-star, then it's extremely sustainable. They're going to score 50 points a game and probably, you know, average 35 plus in the SEC. Yeah, I don't see why they can't be what Oklahoma was under Lincoln Riley because it's like, you know, you look at what Hendon Hooker is doing this year. He's, he's going to be a Heisman finalist. He might win the damn award. That's going to be a great recruiting sell. You've already got Nico waiting in the wings if he hits, like you just said, but that's huge. And you could start, you become a very attractive destination for highly rated quarterbacks. And getting really good quarterbacks is an excellent way to be a good football team. 